So we're performing an external cephalic version according to the charity protocol for twin A, the leading twin in breach position. After counseling about the options and obtaining consent, it's very important that one performs the ultrasound scan, not only to ensure fetal well-being and the position of the twins, but also to assess growth parameters that both twins are normal and concordant in their growth. One also uses the opportunity to assess amniotic fluid volume and we perform ECVs when at least the single deepest pocket is more than three centimeters. It's also important to assess the separating membrane between the twins so that one has an orientation on how both twins are lying in relation to one another and the separating membrane. It's important to assess the presence or absence rather of a uh, nuchal cord, a cord around the neck. Uh, the positions of the placenta is also important to be identified and uh, once this has been performed then one has a three-dimensional picture of how the twins are lying intra-uterine. When we perform external cephalic versions for twins we prefer that the patients lie on the side. This serves to provide two benefits. One, the removal of outer caval compression, an improved perfusion of the uterus, placenta and fetal units. The other benefit is that it provides better access depending on which side the fetus is lying to perform the external cephalic version. There's more accessible area when the mother is lying on the side. To begin, we try to raise the fetal buttocks of the leading twin out of the uterine pelvis and at the same time behind the fetal head in a counterclockwise or clockwise rotation, uh, rotate the fetal head into the pelvis. This is always done in a gentle fashion and taking into account maternal satisfaction. We always ask the mothers to let us know if there's any discomfort so that we can stop the procedure and reassess or re-evaluate the need to continue. Ultrasound scanning during the procedure is very useful not only to identify the movement of the fetus and the fetal head into the pelvis, but also to assess the fetal well-being during the rotation. One also has the opportunity to assess not only the leading twin, but also the second twin during the external cephalic vision with the ultrasound. So that intrauterine ultrasonic assessment plays a very, very important role in the use of external cephalic vision for breech twin A. The use of a ultrasound water-based gel acts not only as a lubricant for the manipulation of the fetal parts, but also allows the intermittent use of the ultrasound to monitor fetal movements and to assess the fetal heart rate. Mobilization of twin A is, as shown in this video, encouraged by gentle manual stimulation of the fetal movements and fetal reflexes. Again, if at any point in time there is resistance to fetal movement or maternal discomfort, the procedure is terminated and reassessed and re-evaluated if it is necessary to continue. If there is any evidence of fetal distress, one should stop the procedure and reassess. When the external cephalic version for twin A breach has been successful, as in this case, ultrasound assessment of the position of the fetuses and Doppler assessments can be performed to assess fetal well-being. A CTG is performed for approximately 45 minutes to one hour after the successful procedure to ensure fetal well-being as well. And the birth planning can then take place regarding induction of labor or continuation of the pregnancy until labor starts. And in cases where necessary, anti-deprophylaxis can be provided.